Caroline Dowd Higgins. Thank you for listening to Your Working Life, my podcast series featuring thought leaders in the career and personal growth arena. Now, I know that you spend a significant portion of your life at work, so I'm on a mission to help provide you with tools, inspiration, and resources so you can enjoy your career and love your life. And I'm so delighted to welcome back a dear friend and a colleague, Jude Bijou, is with me today. Jude, welcome back. It's so good to have you on the show with me today. And the same. It's so nice to be talking with you. Thank you. And I want to tell our audience all about you. Jude is a respected psychotherapist, professional educator, and consultant. Her theory of attitude reconstruction evolved over the course of more than 30 years as a licensed marriage and family therapist. And it's the subject of her multi-award winning book, Attitude Reconstruction, a blueprint for building a better life. And right off the bat, I want to make sure that our listeners know that they can reach Jude on her fantastic website, attitudereconstruction.com. And we'll be referencing that again later. So Jude, let's dive right in. What are bad attitudes and how do they affect us? Okay, well now a bad attitude is really a core belief. So it's something that we, we believe very deeply that shows up in how we talk and how we uh, think and how we act. So say if I have this attitude that there's not enough time, what am I going to do? My mind is just going to be spinning, for one, and it's going, well, what if this happens? And what if this happens? And how about this? No, that's what's going on mentally. But physically, we're all we're on the action. We're moving fast, and we're not paying enough attention because we're just we're in that energy of that attitude. And we might talk in big generalities and not just stick with one thing at a time. Got it. Got it. So we actually create the attitude that we live, right? Exactly. And then the question becomes, where does it come from? Where do these, what we say, because we have good attitudes, absolutely, but Mm -hmm. we also have bad attitudes. Right, right. So how does failing to deal with our emotions lead to developing destructive behavior in life, for example? Well, the emotions that we're talking about are sadness, anger, and fear. Only three emotions. Each feels very different. We know what sadness feels like, and it feels very different than when we're feeling anger in our body and very different than when we're scared. True, true. But now we have, the culture has said, don't cry or give something to cry about, and girls aren't pretty when they're angry, and we got all these messages so that when we naturally have emotions now, we don't have permission to express them like we once did, and so we're compensating, and we compensate in really predictable ways, and those are in those bad attitudes when we haven't dealt with that sadness, anger, and fear. So how do we begin to deal with it, Jude? I use as a model young children because they've got it wired. What happens with them? They, you know, get denied the cookie, and what do they do? They're going to flop down on the floor, and they're going to have a temper tantrum. (laughs) I'm not saying that we all need to start being floppers, but every once in a while, you know, it's frustrating being at work and home and different kind of, you know, just living life. And we need to get that energy out of our body so that we can be our best self. And it's something physical because it's not exercise that you never hear a child say, oh, I'm so frustrated. I'm going to exercise. Right. They don't. So what we have to do is figure out a way that's going to work well for us. And and maybe it's stomping around and making sounds, you know, or like lying on your bed and kicking and screaming or pushing against the wall, but moving that physical energy out of the body. And it's just amazing with just a minute or two of expressing that energy physically in a constructive way that we notice a shift. You know, and I now- I love that because the energy needs to be released, right? It needs a place to go or it manifests a stress, right? In those bad attitudes, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. people who are being you know, real negative and stuff like that, that's like they've got some anger. Deal with your anger. It's human. It's okay. Find a safe place because you're not going to want to do it in front of your coworkers right. necessarily right. or in your family. But, gee, I'm going to the garage for a minute or, hey, you know, <laughs> I'm in the back bedroom or in your car. Fabulous place to get that anger out. You, you take that steering wheel parked when the car is parked. Take the steering wheel and shake the daylights out of it. It won't break. 
but you'll feel so good. Yeah. As long you're not swearing, you're just moving that energy out of the body. I love it. I love it. You know, I'm, I'm glad you gave that very specific example because I'm envisioning, you know, colleagues and friends and clients in their office space thinking, okay, what can you do to release that? So we can stomp, we can shake our hands, we can move about. Any other physical suggestions about how to let it go? Absolutely, because we're talking about anger right now. Yeah. And the best place at work is to head to the bathroom. Okay. In the middle of a meeting or whatever, nobody's going to deny you a couple minutes. Right. I've, I've got to go to the bathroom. So you're in there, you can do something really fun called hinge anger. And that is you take the side of the door of the, um, you know, the, yeah, the bathroom stall, right? Yes. Yeah, stall. And you shake it back and forth on it. <laughs> and, and you feel so good. Somebody comes in, you go, Oh, I'm just getting my anger out. You know, cause I'm not making, I'm not swearing. <laughs> right. But it's like, move that out, you know, or, or, or stomp around in the bathroom or go out behind the, the office building. Just move that energy. And you, you know, you start to laugh. Yeah. Yeah. You, just, you get a shift. You get a shift. Now I can deal with whatever is going on. I don't have to resort to those bad attitudes. Oh, dude. I love that. I love that. Okay. So how does one rewire unhelpful thought patterns such as being a, let's say you're a run with it person, right? Who changes directions on a dime, but doesn't necessarily think things through. Absolutely. Let's take a look at what is the emotion. That's not really an angry kind of person with a lot of unexpressed anger. It's more of a fear person. Right, right. They're moving fast, right? <clears throat> we're anxious, jittery, and, and so on. And so the mind and the body is going really fast. So one of the best things, again, we can do... <clears throat> Just take a minute and start to shiver. Oh. Like a dog at the vet. You see that hunched up behind you and it's just quivering and shaking. Right. Or the body when we get in a car accident. What does it do? That What shock? The body is uncontrollably shaking. It feels like the body thinks my survival is being threatened. I'm going to die. Wow. And we start to shake. And that's what we need to give ourselves permission to do. And again, it seems so weird, but when you try it, it's just a minute or two of instead of tightening down, which is what we do with that run with it, I've got so much to do and now I'm frantic and I'm going around, we're, rather than I've got to move this energy out of my body so I can go, what's next? And, mm -hmm. you know, I really want to unpack that, too, because you described it so beautifully. We get paralyzed and we become still and zombie-like, you know, statues. And that's the absolute opposite. We need to let it out. Exactly. It's not, it's not tightening. It's loosening. Nice. Nice. Okay. So let me describe someone that we've all encountered in our professional lives, right? Someone that I'll describe as an evangelist, right? Someone who thinks that their opinion shouldn't be questions. Ha questions, pardon me. How do you change your attitude if you're dealing with that evangelist or if you okay. are the evangelist? Exactly. Because there's two sides of it. Okay. But say, say you're an evangelist. It's like, you know, you're pretty full of yourself and you really know that, you know, you've been doing it. You're on the block on this. And it's like, what kind of energy are you creating? Is it like, are people wanting, are they feeling good towards you? Right. No, mm -hmm. they're, is, they're isolating you. You're creating separation by thinking I'm better than you. I know more than you. You don't know very much. And so we can change that with this good old technique that I call duct tape. <laughs> you take about six inches, it comes in colors now, and just put it over your mouth and just start to listen. Wow. Wow. I like it's that. It's amazing. It's amazing. People, when we start to listen, <clears throat> we realize people have a lot of interesting things to say. And a lot of them can be incorporated with our wisdom, you know, our own personal position. And, but what we've done, we've done it together. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking mm -hmm. for in work, cooperating. I love it. And you know, it's true. The art of active listening, it's, it's difficult. It's really hard for people to stop talking and authentically <laughs> listen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then especially we want to jump in with, you know, all of our sage wisdom rather than just going, all right, just hold on for a second. Let them see if they've got something more that they want to say. Yeah. And then it's, uh, how does it feel? Uh, you know, I really, that's who we fall in love with. 
That's who we think so well of, of somebody who gives us that love in terms of good, positive energy. Right, right. Beautiful. Just, yeah, just, just have to listen. I, you know, I teach a communication class, and that's one of the first things that I ask. How many people feel like they're listened to enough? And maybe one person, but usually nobody says that. Mm, yeah, very telling. Interesting, Jude. Thank you. Okay, you talk a lot about accessing your intuition and how it can help in everyday problem solving. Give me an example. Okay, well, let's say that uh, you don't know whether you should continue with your job or not. Okay. You know, is, is it time to move on? And then you, you, know, you start to make the list, oh, I've got these are the advantages and these are, but it, there's no movement, mm -hmm. right? You're not pulled in any direction. And we need to really go from our mind, from our mental figuring it all out to looking within. And so it means getting in a quiet place, just pay, taking a few breaths or meditate or whatever is calming for you and say, well, what's really true for me? Not what my parents say and not what my best friend says and all that. What do I know really in my heart, in my quiet moments when I'm clearest, what do I know? Is it time to go? And then if you hear, you know, that feel, you know, that's feeling, sometimes it's words and sometimes it's just an inner sense. Yeah, it's, you know, it's time. Then we have to start to obey because we listen, we hear it, and then we go, oh, no, but I can't. I can't afford uh -huh. the salary. The, 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 the. But we really have to start tuning within. It's our lives. Nobody's going to be able to tell us what to do. We can get information from out there. But it's like we need to really just take that pause and ask ourselves, well, is it time to make a decision? And maybe you get a yes and maybe you get a no. But we do know we just discount it. Right, right. Thank you for giving everyone permission to get quiet. You know, I think that's such an important task and a difficult task because we live in an oversensitized world. And I don't think we spend enough quiet times with ourselves. So thank you so much for sharing that. So yes. we've all got those critical coworkers, and maybe we are the critical coworker. What what do we need to do with uh, that particular characteristic? How do we deal with that? Okay, well, say you've got somebody critically critical in your environment, maybe at work, maybe at home, wherever. Again, first thing to realize is that even though it sounds personal, they're really good at digging right in. It's not really. It's their anger. They've got anger. It goes again back to that emotion. It's sadness, anger, and fear. And that's an angry thing. I'm going to hit you verbally, right? I'm, it's you, 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 you. You are not okay. That's what we do with that anger. And so if we recognize, oh, that's just them, and they're being really icky and putting all that stuff on me. But it's not about me. It's about that they're angry. Yeah, yeah. So I might need to speak up. But I don't have to defend myself. If somebody is coming at me, they're not in a space where they want to listen to what's true for me. So I'm just going to let really let it go by and not take it on and then speak up when I know that it makes sense. Oh, I've listened too much for, you know, for this for right now. Hey, I need to go right now. Got it. Say, speak up. So that's what we do if somebody else is, is doing that. But if, if we are the complainer, what we need to do is get get out more duct tape. <laughs> I like it. I like it. And then what we also can do is look for the good. Radical yeah. concept. Yeah. But instead of complaining, it's like, hey, it's a nice day today. Hey, I really like how well you did on that part of the project. Hey, I really like that that was three days ahead of the schedule. Really, you know, offset it because changing our destructive behaviors at work and at home is really about figuring out exactly what it is that we do that we know we wish we wouldn't and then do the opposite. Yeah. So if I'm out there on people, come on in and look for the good. Excellent. You know, gratitude is such a powerful thing, Jude. I just find that such a positive force in my life, and I try to make that an infectious force in the life lives of the people with whom I work. Do you keep a gratitude journal? How do you, how do you keep gratitude alive in your life every day? Well, I no, I don't write it down, but I do spend that minute or two just going through about, you know, 
all the things that I'm grateful for. And I do it in the morning as part of my morning practice. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so we all know these people. What do you do if you're a no person, right? A person that's constantly saying no. Well, we need to practice that little word, yes. <laughs> right. Right. And so it means if I go and I say, oh, no, that's not going to work, then I can go, oh, wait, let me listen to what you're suggesting. So I'm, ch I'm doing the opposite rather than just that knee jerk, that's not going to work. We can go, again, I need to step back just a little bit and see what, what they're really offering. Is it going to help the business? Is it going to help my work? Is it going to help my team? This, this is really all about wanting to, to create something, some product or something in a positive direction. We want to be part of a team that we got hired for to help with this particular thing. Let's give that, not this isn't going to work and this isn't going to work. Excellent. Excellent. So Jude, we've all met that slightly passive aggressive person in our work and professional lives. What about that person? Or what if we are that person? How do we change? Well, what's happening here with somebody who's passive aggressive? It's sort of like you're in the, the planning meeting and somebody takes that role of, all right, I'm pulling back. I'm, I'm going to let you guys make the plan. I don't like what you're figuring out, so I'm not going to be involved anymore. I'm going to yeah. leave it to you. That's that passive, okay, right, whatever, it's going to work. Then when it gets down to the presentation or whatever, what are, they're the ones that go, I told you it wasn't going to work, or yeah, you guys did it wrong, rather than going, I need to do the opposite. So when I want to pull back because I don't like it, I need to speak, speak up gracefully, not by you guys are missing it, mm. by talking about ourselves. Hey, you know what? I'd like to say, I'd like to suggest we do this. So it's getting involved rather than that passive pulling back. And then instead of striking out, it's like, how can we work this? How can we make this work better together? What are we going to do? All right, this was this person's strengths and this was this. And how are we going to put that together? So, again, it's just doing opposite of what is just born of those, that frustration, that anger that we have or that fear or the sadness. Just contradict it. And you see the benefit. The benefit's just so obvious. Oh, I love that. So, Jude, this is something that, that I experience as a consultant. When I go into organizations, quite often the company or the organization will say, you know, we've got a mediocrity syndrome. We've got people that are not inspired to do their best work, and we've got some slacker syndrome. How do we motivate and engage these employees because they're not really giving their all? What's your thought on that? Well, again, it goes back to the person got hired to be part of a team. And sometimes we forget that. And it's so that we need to be reminded. So it is like it's not a confrontation versus, hey, let's re review the goal. Let's, you know, and this is what your, your part in that whole goal that we all want that you signed up to, to be part of. So it's reminding them of the larger picture. And that we've got to work together. It's going to be teamwork. It's like sports. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it doesn't work when somebody is just, you know, not kicking the soccer ball around or whatever. That just doesn't work. We all have to say we want the same goal. And I'm willing to, again, go against my old pattern, which is just do minimum and go, let's see how I feel if I really jump all in. Excellent. Jude Bijou, always an absolute joy to have you on. I'm so excited to hear your voice today and talk with you about these exciting things. And I want to remind our listener, listeners, your book is called Attitude Reconstruction, a blueprint for building a better life. So tell us how we can buy the book and how we can follow you online. Absolutely. Well, the book is available at Amazon, both uh, as a paperback and uh, an ebook, uh, also through my website, which is, as you mentioned, I think, www.attitudereconstruction. And you can sign up for a monthly newsletter. You can take a free quiz to figure out what attitudes aren't working for you and then get some really practical suggestions about, again, simple ways, because we're talking about simple little things. 
And and I will tell you, I'll give a shout out. I subscribe to your newsletter and I love it. And you're absolutely right. They're actionable steps that you can put into your life easily. They're implementable. So I would highly recommend not only your book, but also the newsletter. Jude, thank you for sharing those wonderful resources. You know, it's just my pleasure in general and talking to you today. Thank you, my dear. I hope I get to see you sometime soon. And I'm so delighted that you could spend this time with me on the show today. Thank you. Be well. And I want to thank our listeners for tuning into Your Working Life, where my goal is to help you design your career destiny so it doesn't happen by default. True career and life satisfaction is possible, and it's time to embrace what you love doing so you can do more of it. I'm Caroline Dowd-Higgins. Take good care.